Today is a very day that we have come here to talk about the charity that uh, Mahmood and his friends have organized, which is Pedal for Life, which is doing so much, but also have a chance to meet each other. Uh, this, the idea of this gathering today was to have a chance to meet each other, for the community to see each other, also learn about the charitable work that is being done. It's just past New Year. New Year is the time when people in this country meet each other, talk to each other, reflect on what's been happening. Uh, 2014 has gone. We all have memories of 2014 and what happened there. But I'm sure all of you will agree that there, there is one memory that stands out for everyone. And that is the tragedy that happened in Peshawar. That is something that affected us all. I'm not going to say much about that. Just to say one share. Aksar जनाजे पे देखे हैं फूल हमने आज पहली बार फूलों का जनाजा देखा रारा देन एनी ऑफ अस सेइंग एनीथिंग ये जो हमारे जो फूल हैं इस सिलसिले में उन्हीं से हम कहेंगे कि कुछ अपने वो आके कुछ बात बताएं तो सबसे पहले मैं इनवाइट करूंगा हनिया तैमूर को कि आके वो कुछ कहें अस्सलाम वालेकुम my name is Hania Temur and I would like to share my feelings with you over the inhuman massacre that of innocent children that happened in Peshawar recently. The 16th of December 2014 was a terrible day. 152 people in a school were killed, 133 of them innocent children. The people behind this cruel act were ruthless terrorists. They call themselves Muslims and say they fight in the name of God, but would a Muslim commit such a horrible act? Even in war, Muslims must never kill women, children or the elderly. Do they not know the teachings of Islam? What have these children ever done to them? that they should end their lives. Children go to school for education, not to be killed. I feel very upset and disturbed about this. The courage of the parents of these unfortunate children is remarkable and represents the true spirit of sabr in Islam. My heart goes out to the parents of these children and I stand in solidarity with them. We will defeat these terrorists and will never be afraid of them. That was very good. Assalamualaikum. Okay. On December the 16th, 2014, my alarm went off at 6 30 in the morning, telling me it was time for another day of uni. I pressed the snooze alarm, as the usual and five minutes later had to drag myself out of bed and get ready for the day. My mum gave me a lift to the station so I could catch my train. I jumped out of the car, said Allah Hafiz, see you later, I shouted as I ran off to make my 7.56 a.m. train. On that same day in Pakistan, other children were going through this same morning routine. Around a thousand students at the army public school in Peshawar, woke up in the morning, put on their uniforms, had breakfast, and headed out for a day of school. That evening, I arrived home, and I sat down for dinner with my family. In Peshawar, however, one-tenth of those APS students didn't come home for dinner. In fact, they were never to return home to share a meal with their family again. The horrendous Peshawar attack of December the 16th can be considered the 9-11 of Pakistan. In December, someone said that 
रूप तेरा अनमोल दिसंबर धूप तेरी अनमोल दिसंबर राज में तेरे जान गया हूँ खोल दूँ तेरे पोल दिसंबर अब तक मैं ही बोल रहा तू भी कुछ बोल दिसंबर दिसंबर फिर 16 दिसंबर को सर चढ़ के बोला हमारे 150 बच्चे शहीद कर दिए गए उन्हीं में उसी स्कूल की एक टीचर मिसिज नबीला फरीदी से मेरी मुलाकात पिछले लास्ट वीक हुई मेरी बड़ी ख्वाहिश थी कि मैं उनको आपके सामने यहाँ पेश करता उन्होंने मुख्तलिफ वजूहत की बिना पर यहाँ आने से इनकार किया उन्होंने दो तीन मैसेज भेजे आपके लिए वो मैं आपसे शेयर करना चाहता हूँ कि हमारे मुल्क में माशरती नासाफ़ी और मजहब के नाम पर जो कत्लो गारत का ना रुकने वाला सिलसिला जारी है उसकी रोकथाम के लिए ना तो हमने कुछ किया और ना ही हमारे हुक्मरानों ने कुछ किया उनका भी यही ख्याल है कि मजहब के नाम पर उन्होंने तो अपनी औलाद को खो दिया उनके सामने उनके पाँच साल के बच्चे को गोलियाँ मार कर शहीद किया गया अब उस माँ का कलेजा उस माँ का दिल यहाँ पर कितनी सारी माएँ बैठी हैं वो बहुत अच्छी तरह से जानती हैं तो मजहब के बारे में उन्होंने यही कहा कि मजहब के जो व्यापारी हैं वो सबसे बड़ी बीमारी हैं वो जिनके सिवा सब काफिर हैं जो दीन का हरफ आखिर हैं इन धोखेबाज मक्कारों से मजहब के ठेकेदारों से मैं बागी हूँ मैं बागी हूँ ये खुद औरत को नचवाते हैं बाजार की जिन्स बनवाते हैं फिर उसकी इसमत के गम में तहरीकें भी चलवाते हैं अयारों से मक्कारों से इन रियाबाज मक्कारों से मैं बागी हूँ अफसोस के हमारे हुक्मरान मिसिज आफरीदी ने मुझे बताया कि जब उनका बच्चा दो साल का था तो वो चांद को दिखाकर उसको सुलाती थी और अब वो उस चांद से कहती हैं ए चांद यहां ना निकला कर बेनाम से सपने देखा कर यहां उल्टी गंगा बहती है इस देश के अंधे हाकिम हैं ना डरते हैं ना मरते हैं ना नादिम हैं ना सादिम हैं इस देश में कारोबार बहुत इस देश में गुर्दे बिकते हैं ए चांद यहां ना निकला कर ये देश है अंधे लोगों का बेनाम से सपने देखा कर आखिर में उस खातून ने मेरे से ये रिक्वेस्ट की कि बेशक हमारे बच्चों की मफरत के लिए दुआ मत कीजिए क्योंकि वो तीन चार पाँच साल के बच्चे थे उन्होंने इस दुनिया में क्या गुनाह किए होंगे हमारे लिए दुआ कीजिए कि अल्लाह ताला हमें सब्र अता फरमाए क्योंकि सारी ज़िंदगी अब उनको इसी तरह ही रहना पड़ेगा नहीं लंघदा वक्त विछोड़े दा नहीं लंघदा वक्त विछोड़े दा बिन बच्चिया गुजारा किस तरह की करिए दुनिया तो किनारा हो सकता बच्चिया तो किनारा कौन करे एक दिन हो वे ते लंघ जावे सारी जिंदगी गुजारा कौन करे मोजिद खातिन हजरा बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया और मैं समझता हूँ कि आपके दिलों में भी वही एहसास और जज्बात हैं जो उस माँ के दिल में भी हैं थैंक यू वेरी मच हेलो I am your dear. I am eating, drinking, and sleeping with you, son of Adam, and you don't even realize it. You're not aware of anything. When I tricked you, you were thrown out of Jannah. Since then, Allah has been warning you and reminding you. But you don't listen to Allah. You listen to me, and you still think you will return to Jannah? Pfft, you're just a piece of mud, and you'll always stay that way. I'm greater than you. I'm made out of fire, and I can do whatever I want to. The most I could do. Is whisper a couple of words in your ear, and you will listen and quickly do as I say. If I just say worship an idol, you're not going to do that because you think you are truthful to Allah, but you're foolish. You, I made you worship all that is around you, including yourself and your ego. I made you worship money and everything else of no value in this dunya. I will chase you and constantly trick you so that you sin. And so join me in hell. It started off when the mood was asking me about stone supplies and how much was thrown away, and could he have it and send it over to Pakistan. So um, I was giving the stuff to him, and he said, "Well, this is great, but unfortunately, not many people know how to use it over there." So to say I was encouraged to go to Pakistan is putting it mildly. I was um, bulldozed into it, really. But um, I, I thought for myself, teaching is. Something that I really enjoy. I thought it was a good opportunity for me to teach and train the nurses. Something that I really enjoy doing. 
I am able to develop, I have been able to develop professionally, very much so. I've learned lots of skills. Um, I've even been involved in the surgery itself. I'm an endoscopist, but as a um, specialist nurse, I've really developed. And I thought it would be good to be able to go over to Pakistan where they don't, the nurses don't have the opportunity to develop and see if I can encourage this to happen and hopefully maybe inspire them to, to go further. I started off with one month in Pakistan, which I really enjoyed, in a cancer hospital in Lahore. And the idea was to do some really intense stoma teaching with some hand-picked nurses, you know, the, the ones that were sort of top of their field. And I stayed here in the Shukhut Karman Memorial Hospital, which was absolutely beautiful. And this is uh, the nurses' training centre. And just to the right, I had a little apartment of my own, so I was um, tucked away quite nicely. But I had a wonderful time. The nurses were really, really in inspiring in themselves. They really wanted to learn. My role was working directly with these nurses, motivational, encouraging them to seek further development increasing their profile, um, just really just to help them develop and also to benefit the patients. Uh, my wife been pestering for me the last 14 years to come and share our experience with the community because there are many people sitting among yourself who have contributed a lot in many ways in our work and it's not my work only and I want to share it with you openly now, how we can change the lives of others and improve the situation in Pakistan in whatever way we can. So our journey starts again. There are always women behind good work. Men are rarely behind them. They are ahead of them anyway. Sorry about that. Whenever there was an hour of need, especially after the earthquake 2005, and there is my friend, uh, there are many friends of mine who shared uh, the work with us and particularly I must mention Amjad Gulzar Sheikh who dedicated his six months and established a trauma center in Abbottabad. And many other friends, Dr. Lashari, Arif Khan and many others uh, who joined him and we were lucky that our container was there and we were able to provide A-class health service to these people free of cost. Not only that, the community collected a lot of fun to give to the patients money when they were discharged because once they were discharged, there was nowhere to go, no money because everything is destroyed. So we carried that work and we still carry that pride, a very humble pride and all thanks to all friends, particularly my friend uh, Amjad Gulzar Sheikh. And then there he is, the dream team and Dr. Arshad uh, uh, Javed, he's an, an orthopedic surgeon from Blackpool. He did an enormous amount of work as well. And then we had another call when the IDPs from uh, Sawat, they were displaced from their homes. And my good friend, I don't know whether he's here today or not, he did promise to come, Shamrez Kiani. Uh, he collected lots of funds and he went himself there. He was there in, in, in the earthquake as well in, in Abbottabad. For a good few months, he established an account. Our work moved on, and I'm sure the time is running by, and I must make it simple. Our aims are to improve the health service, not by providing hardware, which is medical equipment and stuff, but also to improve the quality of nursing, which is the Cinderella of health service in Pakistan, unfortunately. Jackie has been instrumental, and we are trying to rope in other girls to go and teach various things, and isn't even physiotherapist. And also, there is an, uh, an august constellation of specialists among us from Pakistani diaspora who must join hands with us and go back home through us. We can arrange training for doctors there and must do the transfer of skills, which is instrumental. And that also will improve uh, the health service overall. Hi, this is a great pleasure to say something about uh, Cradle for Life. This is a great charity really which is run by a few friends uh, 
basically um, from the back of their their garage or or from within their houses they have been doing this incredible uh, job of providing surgical instruments and other uh, uh, instruments which are not really uh, terribly needed in uh, British hospitals, uh, they get taken back to Pakistan and provided to local hospitals. Pakistani doctors who are living outside Pakistan uh, are not doing this thing for uh, a little while. They have been doing it for many, many years. And wherever they are, whether they are living in America or England or Europe or even Middle East, they've been raising funds because one, they know the problems of Pakistan. Governments claim that they know pro uh, about the problems of people. But these are the people who are on the front line because if education and health remains the largest issues of that country, doctors and their associates know these problems better than most people. It's obviously a great pleasure to be here for the event which is organized by Cradle for Life, a charity which has uh, done so much and continues to do so much. Uh, but it's not just about learning about the charity, it's also a chance for the local community to come together, to meet each other, and also to reflect on some of the events that have taken place. I'm delighted to be here today. It's a real honor to be involved with this uh, charity that I've been involved with in the beginning. It started very small, and it's been great to see it grow. I've done a lot of work with uh, the nurses over in Pakistan, trained them in stoma care, and now they're training others. They're they're running their own clinics, and it's just brilliant to, to see how it's grown and developed. We help a lot of hospitals and some educational institutes, and we also promote uh, transfer of skills and specialist training for nurses in Pakistan, which is the key for the better health service in Pakistan. And our uh, esteemed colleague, Jackie North, has gone there twice on her own expense and is also preparing to go towards the end of this year or early next year when the weather is more conducive. So we pray and we hope that all our community, especially doctors and those people who have talents, they can join us or they can work on their own. But please do work for Pakistan, transfer your skills, do not consider whatever the political circumstances are, whatever the politicians are doing, we will be asked what we have done from what we were given.